they tried. Um, so the problem, of course, is uh, what makes iron brittle is the amount of carbon in it. And of course, to make steel, then you want to get rid of that carbon if you possibly can. But when you're using coke or charcoal for fuel, you know, and you're mixing it right in with the iron ore, it's really difficult to get charcoal out of the iron. So most of the pig iron had a fairly high amount of charcoal, uh, of, excuse me, of carbon in it. You know, and I say a high amount, 3%, which was high. And so that was what Bessemer's process did. He would blow air, or sometimes oxygen, through the molten iron, uh, and the, the, the uh, oxygen uh, would pick up carbon and create carbon dioxide and go off as a gas. And he could eliminate a lot of the carbon in the iron by just blowing air through the molten iron, and that's called the Bessemer process. It's a little more complicated than that, but again, I, I don't claim to be a metallurgist, so. Yes, sir? Was there any use for the uh, byproduct of sweet that came off? Did they use it? all the slag? The slag, right. Well, it's interesting you, you, you question that because if you go to a furnace today, an old furnace, you know, you think there would just be mountains of slag in there, right? Yeah. You hardly see any. It's really hard to find that. It's because it became an incredible road ballast. And so when they started building roads, instead of gravel, they would literally mine that slag out and lay it down and roll it over and then put asphalt on top of it. And so it was used, it's also used in, con in concrete. Instead of putting gravel and uh, cement, uh, they would put the slag in there. Is that, so, the, is that where the name there. cinder blocks come from? Uh, you got me there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, I came, you're talking about the charcoal rock furnace. I came across one in uh, 1810. And I can't remember which one it is. My great great grandfather was said to have worked in or run a furnace in Lithia, Virginia, Botetourt County. And I have not been able to find any information on that furnace. Where? Can I look? Well, start by looking in the red book back here. Um, the term lithia rings a bell, but I don't really remember. Lithia or lithia springs. Yeah, there, there, there may be mention of, of lithia springs. See, my problem is, you know, I work on an area and I study all these iron furnaces. And I work on an area and study all these other iron furnaces. And this, I get confused. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. When you said it shut it down, that's the answer to you. Yeah, yeah. The yeah I think I've looked through this before. What, what's that process like? You would just clean off the water right here? Yeah, of course, you, what you do is you, instead of putting uh, iron ore and limestone and charcoal in the furnace, you just put charcoal in there. Yeah, and so you just keep burning it and burning it until it eventually. And then just let it go out. What his, his job was. Yes, sir. When these Pennsylvanians came up the valley, I assume they were Mennonites or other Germans who didn't want to have slaves, but it sounds like the economics wouldn't allow them to pay wages to free workers so that they had to cut costs by getting slaves. Is that how it worked? Well, I think they just needed manpower. And, uh, you know, they just couldn't find it. So they just didn't have a choice. And of course, that happened over you know years. It didn't just sell tomorrow like our slaves. You know, I mean, eventually the economics kind of catches up to things. And people change based on it. All right. Well, thank you all so much for coming. And